G'day guys, James here from Punning Form. Today we are going to discuss benchmarks, which is essential to the whole Punning Form ecosystem. And really it's how you compare horses and do form on horse racing when horses haven't raced against each other. How do you know which horse is better prepared for an upcoming race in Melbourne if their last start was in Sydney and in Perth and another runner from the race has just come over from Hong Kong? How do you compare those runners who've run over distant differences in different conditions against different fields well, that is what the benchmark system is all about. I'm going to do my best to walk through an example here um, and give you something to look at in terms of how to look at benchmark data, not just for the race from start to finish, but also the start to the 600 meter mark, the 600 meter mark to home, the last 200. We've got all of that on the punting form database. So let's get into it. Okay, benchmarks. The best way to think about them is the scoring of golf. So you want high negative numbers. That means that horses have run significantly faster than the average horse. Um, perfect example, which I'll get into in a second, is the Cox Plate, the 2023 Cox Plate, won by an international horse, Romantic Warrior, beating uh, horses that had runs locally. We're gonna take a quick look at that, and then I'm gonna preview an example coming up. Now. I'm going to refer to the notes just so that I can get this right. But Punning Form has been doing this since 2012. There's over a million runs where they've recorded the time and created a benchmark on that. Now, uh, they do that using proprietary algorithms of raw, and sec of raw sectional times captured by their team, which has over 200 years of cumulative experience. Now, out of this combination, they generate a series of benchmarks that enables you to compare the speed performance of one horse to another. They take thousands of sectional time runs per track and apply an algorithm using distance and class variables to create track par times. That's the golf analogy. Um, we do this to enable, us, uh, to enable us to normalize the fact that runners perform differently depending on track surfaces and geometry. Secondly, we capture the sectional time performance of every runner in Australia, um, Hong Kong, Singapore, and now North America. Um, and as a minimum, they capture the, the benchmark performance from the start of the race to the finish. But obviously, as you'll see in the database, there's from the start to the 600 meter marker, also from the 600 meter marker to home, the 200 meter to home, I think it's the 400 meter um, to home as well. Um, and there's also 100 meter increments that you can get as well, uh, which are exclusive and, um, and you should email support at punningform.com.au and find out about those. Now, um, what else? So. Uh, the, they've captured raw sectional times are 92% of all races since 2012. And thirdly, we capture the individual runner's positions from the inside running rail at all sectional markers to determine a runner's wide position in running. You can see the wide database as well. Now, all of these benchmark data, uh, they're spat out into three different, um, they're displayed three different ways. Now, the, the main one, the one that I use is the all average benchmark. That enables you to compare runners' sectional performances on any track distance conditions and class. Um, so that's what I refer to as the average horse. The class benchmark, um, obviously this is a group one that we're looking at. That's you know a, a premium class. So the expectations and the benchmarks um, for winning that race are gonna be significantly faster and more of a negative number. Um, so the class benchmark compares sectional performance across any track distance within the race class. And a relative gain benchmark compares runners finishing a sectional performance within the race. How well did the runner finish compared to the leading runners in the race? Now again, we want negative numbers. Um, that indicates that the bigger the negative, um, the, the faster they were in lengths compared to the average horse. Now again, Romantic Warrior winning the 2023 Cox Plate. I was on Mr. Brightside. Both of them, and Alligator Blood as well, and many of the runners in the field have super strong benchmark performances across their resume. I'll try to articulate and show that here. But just looking at the race, I'm, I'm looking at the race results feature within Punting Form, and you can see each runner there, this is um, the, the total race. I think it's Finn for finish, but the total race, Romantic Warrior was 17.8 lengths faster than the average horse over 2,040 meters um, to win that race. So it's incredibly fast time, very fast, very fast. You can see that there. Um, Mr. Brightside just losing ran 17.7 lengths faster. These are the benchmark times. Scrolling all the way to the bottom, King Colorado still ran an electric time, 11 lengths faster than the average horse pinstripe there as well. So you can see really strong performances. Now, how would you have known to back Romantic Warrior? Well, 
you can go through the database and you would see that the benchmark performances of that horse running predominantly in Sha 10 is comparable to any of the other horses in the field. That's why I was a favorite on the day um, and was able to win the race. But if we just go through here, you can see the venues that they've run at, uh, where Romantic Warrior ran in each of its preps, and the runner um, benchmark performances that it that it performed on the day. So obviously 17.8 lengths faster to win the Cox Plate. Um, and just uh, quickly, you can change this to the class and there are different drop downs all across the punting form website. Um, but these are the defaults that I like to look at with the all average benchmark. Um, you can see within its performances, it's ran a minus 12 and a half there, a minus 11 and a half, a minus 14.4 over 2000 meters at charts in, a minus 12 there as well. So relevant to the distance, it's got really strong performances. Um, so you can see that in the resume of the horse, which is below. Whenever you click on a horse, you can see their benchmark performances um, underneath the standard view. Um, and I'll just quickly show Alligator Blood. So scrolling down on Alligator Blood, you can see just incredible resume of benchmark performances. Look at that. Ran a minus 19, um, which it won that race. I forget which, uh, which, which group run that was. Um, and then minus 17.6 uh, was what we're referring to at the Cox Plate, and a minus 16 after that race. So super strong performances, so minus 10s there. So that's how you can look at the benchmark across. That's the finish of the race. I didn't even touch on the last 600. You can scroll through and look at that electric finish, the last 600 meters there, five starts ago. Um, and to the 600 meter mark, no matter where the race starts from, but to the 600 meter marker, that's how fast it went. Look at that time, just absolutely incredible there okay so let's find an example going forward a predictive uh little pick here we're at gosford race three there's only four meetings today um but this this one stood out to me in terms of this horse yankee hustle which populates many times on the top four performance tally 34 times in fact it's only a dollar 70 so i'm trying to grab some low-hanging fruit here but it seems to be better than them um hopefully i can i can articulate why the expectations on this class one race over 2100 meters um, is that they can go six lengths slower, 5.9 lengths slower, and still win this race um, compared to the all average. Now looking at Yankee Hustle, it, um, and I'm just gonna scroll to the right, you can see the PF score, which I love as a, as a strong indication. The neural price says it's not great value, but um, we're gonna dismiss that for a second. Early speed rank, top rank there, race time price there. Weight class price, jockeys informed, Tommy Berry, beautiful. And I'll keep moving across. We can see here Yankee Hustle really starts to populate in the benchmarks. Um, where do we start? The fastest last 600 last start. Now Muckabout was marginally faster, running 11 days ago, 1.3 lengths faster than the all average across 2300 meters. Yankee Hustle, um, this was only uh, 1550 meters, um, but it's ran nearly a length faster than the all average. Fastest last 200, um, that was last start. And then fastest in the last two years, you can see that it populates three times here. Two starts ago was was great running. That's, you know, how did we see before that we only need to go 5.9 lengths slower than an average horse to win this race. And yet two starts ago, Yankee Hustles ran eight lengths faster uh, than the average horse over 1600 meters. You can see another performance which is super relevant at 2200 meters. Yes, it was half a year ago, but it's only five starts ago. Six lengths faster than the average horse. Uh, another data entry there, and strong performance eight starts ago. So you can see it's just littered with strong performances. Four starts ago, it's ran, um, what are we, eight lengths faster over the last 600 meters. Nine starts ago. Um, so you can see often we've got two lengths ago, uh, sorry, two starts ago, five starts ago, eight starts ago, four starts ago, nine starts ago. These are all really competitive performances. It looks to be stronger than the field. It's got strong runs, strong benchmark performances at the distance as well. I think it performs well in the conditions. It does. I'm just scrolling to the right here to highlight those. Now I'm going to click on Yankee Hustle. Again, we need to run 5.9 lengths slower than the average horse over 2,100 meters or whatever the distance is to win the race. And we can see that almost all of Yankee Hustle's performances are within that. There's a couple of slow ones three preps ago, but every other performance here, including some really strong ones, articulate. I'm looking at the runner data here, um, all average benchmark, and we're in lengths. Section time rank, we can change that as well. 
and you can go to the class. But looking at this, we can see that Yankee Hustle has a really strong pedigree. Looks to be, you know, it's been racing in Flemington and Canterbury uh, to come back to the bush and race at Gosford. Looks too good for them. It is only a dollar seventy, um, but it looks too strong for them. Looks a bench. Uh, looks a bet based on the benchmark data for that horse. Let's go. Is left to go. Yankee Hustle going well, the favourite. Up to the turn. Got away by three. Gallivant, a Cheval Zavada. Starts to wind up out deeper than four o'clock. Knock, but passing the 200 metre mark. Yankee Hustle in front. Still bobbing in the lead. Four o'clock. Knock, chasing hard with Cheval Zavada. Yankee Hustle in front. Getting tired. Four o'clock. Knock's going to have a late shot on the outside, but Yankee Hustle has a commanding lead. Yankee Hustle one by two. Second, four o'clock. Knock, Cheval Zavada. Bang, we'll take that, a uh, little dollar seventy for punters at home. Um, but hopefully that's a way just to articulate the, the power of benchmarks, um, both from the, the Cox Plate example that we looked at and how you can compare horses no matter where the, their lead-up races come from uh, versus that one at Gosford. Um, starter subscriptions, you do get some benchmark data at $59 a month. It's incredibly, incredibly cheap. But the professional punters is the subscription that I have that I'm walking through that has all of that historical benchmark performances as well as other ratings. Um, it also cheap um, for the value that's provided with that. Um, many, many successful punters, winning punters, professional punters use that um, as their primary source of information with doing the form. Uh, if you've got any questions, please put them in the video below or send us an email, support at punningform.com.au. Thank you for watching.